Universe and welcome to the review of the past week in Serie A. Uh, well, if you want to have an exciting championship, yes, the Premier League is really exciting this season. Uh, no doubt about it. But I think that Serie A edges it. Just for the simple reason, we have a title race. Yes, the top four is decided, but we have a relegation battle that is just beyond belief. At the moment, no one is relegated yet. And hence, I am varying, probably for the last time this season, I'm varying Venezia, who salvaged themselves and then also needed Cagliari to salvage them uh, in an absolutely mad game in Salerno. Uh, so absolutely, absolutely, absolutely uh, amazing uh, stuff down in the table. We also have an exciting uh, race for the last uh, Europa League and Europa Conference League spots. There is some permutations that can still happen. And of course we have the title race. We have the title race that is going down the wire. I actually can very well see this going down to the last day of the season. I would wish it's already done come next weekend. Uh, and yeah, potential is there, but I don't believe it. I think this will go down the wire. But my counter at this very moment is, for this Milan fan, it is four points, two games. That should be doable. This sounds, and uh, it, it, it is so amazing as a Milan fan, because most Milan fans, uh, most of April, uh, uh, late March, you were kind of a little bit down, the performances were not really there, you were dropping points again against opponents where you wouldn't expect to drop points, and you just stayed in the title race with the, um, uh, with the um, uh, win at Lazio, and then Inter lose at Bologna and suddenly all the excitement, I mean the fan base is ignited at this point. It's to a degree that I have not seen in a very, very, very long time and I am, as, as you can imagine, super excited and super nervous too. Because that title would mean so much. It would be a conf confirmation that the way of... Um, being financially diligent and, you know, don't go crazy and, and so on. That this is paying off, getting young talent, balance it out with all old, old guys. That this is paying off. I will, it will be so amazing to happen, to be honest. Yes, from a poor sporting perspective, Inter still have the battle squad. But the story behind Milan with, a, uh, you know, cutting the wage bill and going for the Scudetto, it will be amazing. It would just be amazing. But, you know, I really am not getting ahead of myself. Um, not getting ahead of myself. Also, uh, going through, we have here the reminder that Bologna beat Inter <laughs> late April. Uh, but we had a makeup game um, with Salernitana beating Venezia 2-1, uh, I think, with a late winner. Uh, and in that sense, uh, also Venezia got a red, red card. At this moment, Salernitana was out of the relegation zone for the first time in forever. This is one of those uh, ma uh, magic escapes that Nicola, I think, already did once. Was it Cortone? Uh, he might pull, pull a little bit of a Salernitana. Because remember, when this game uh, was originally uh, scheduled to be played in early uh, January, we all thought... Venezia is going, uh, um, Salernitana is going down and Venezia is probably the one promoted team that will stay in. How the tables have turned there. It, it, it is really because I think at the time that this was scheduled to get to play, I'm pretty sure that Venezia would have gotten a result there in Salerno. So, uh, pretty big result there. Uh, we'll talk about the relegation fight um, a little bit more. Um, first, Friday evening, I decided to not watch. <laughs> It was so funny, I was finishing up our work, the game was on the scene. 1-0 Empoli, 2-0 Empoli, goal scrapped, 1-0 Empoli, 2-0 Empoli, and I, am, and I said, okay, we decided to make a family evening, and I told uh, my family, guys, let's watch, I really should not. The problem is, you know, up until the third minute, Empoli was 2-0 up, which meant that if Inter would drop points there, this would have uh, basically made uh, Milan champions. However, uh, a Romagnoli own goal and then a Lautaro Martinez goal just before halftime settles is a 2-2 and then Inter kicking the next here, Lautaro scoring um, a third and then uh, Alexis Sanchez. But they had to dig deep and this game was of course played on Friday because of the Italian Cup Final come coming up more in, that in, in a little bit. But preparation for the Cup Final, maybe not the best because you want to actually save a little bit your, your plays and play it easy. You had to go all out there. Juventus surely 
save their players. And uh, I don't want to say handy Genoa 2-1 uh, win. Um, Paulo Dybala gives uh, Juve the lead. However, uh, Genoa get an equalizer in the 87th. And then Crescito in the 95th minute has a penalty. Sounds familiar? Yes. A week ago in the derby he missed it. This one, he steps up and converts it. It gives Genoa uh, a really, really important win. This makes up for uh, the lost derby in many, many ways. Although I think if Genoa, uh, they still would have liked that point in the, in, in the derby. It gives Genoa a big shot in the arm and uh, puts a lot of pressure on all the opponents that are in the relegation battle. Uh, we can skip over most of the Saturday games. I think there was nothing really of note. Um, and we can go straight to Venezia against Bologna. Snisa Mihailovic back on the bench, uh, which is uh, amazing to see. Getting a second time uh, to, uh, you know, through leukemia. Uh, he is a true warrior. The one thing though is, I'm not, I'm not sure how happy the Bologna, I mean, I'm sure they were uh, ecstatic to see him. However, when he left, they had lost. They stayed unbeaten for the whole time that he was in the hospital. He comes back and they lose. And in an absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy game. Venezia needed this win and need definitely some help. They are up through 2-0 uh, in a 20th in, 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 in minute. I think uh, Akine uh, had a penalty saved, but uh, on the rebound makes May, makes it then 2-0. Uh, Orsolini pulls one back. Then Arnaldo in the 55th gets the equalizer and shout, the Scouten in the 68th gives Bologna the lead again. So at this point, uh, all things in Venezia are going a little bit, yeah, blah, 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 we're going down. But an Aramu penalty in the 78th uh, gets is the things level. Then you have a stoppage time winner through Jonsson. Uh, mad scenes, Venezia have a shot. Venezia have a shot, but now it comes down to the head-to-head -head between Salernitana and Cagliari. And I actually made a real point of watching this game because um, I knew this is more or less it's between those two teams who will get uh, relegated and the first half was it was your absolutely typical prototypical rele rele relegation but there was a lot of uh, scraps and, and so on, but there was nothing really really happening uh, in terms of, of, of play. Uh, the game kicked at the next level when in around the 65 minute a penalty was awarded. Uh, Huge protest from Cagliari, but if you look at the replay, uh, to, to me it was a pretty, pretty clear uh, penalty. Then all, you know, the mind game start with the goalie uh, not rolling over, they're complaining that the ball is, is not put co correctly, but Simone Verdi staying very calm and collected and buries it, absolutely buries it. Uh, wild celebrations uh, afterwards, um, during, during those, there was a scuffle where Ribery and Radunovic got sent off, uh, both of them not playing, so, uh, but, you know, it was a really, really, really nervy game. Then, uh, late on, Cagliari really tries to pull forward and Salon Tado kind of holding back. It really seemed that they might hold on. But then, uh, a big scene, I think in the 96th minute, a penalty is awarded for Cagliari. Uh, and it seemed to be in the first three places, absolute stonewall penalty. But then you see a little bit back that um, goalie comes out, Salandana goalie comes out, has the ball, ball in his hand, it's, it's kicked out of his hand. So it's a no penalty, and that took forever. Uh, five minutes of uh, stall stoppage time became a 10 minute stoppage time there. And you thought this was a big letter for Salernitana. Now with that they with that win, they more or less have to stay up in Serie A, stay secured. And while I really like the Salernitana story, I was thinking, uh, just thinking from a million perspective, my own, own, own perspective, I really don't want to lose Cagliari because I actually really love this shirt. And Zach Zakov, I really need Cagliari to get a point there so that they have something to play for when they play into the upcoming weekend. So just from this end, of course, I have a work call a colleague who supports Calgary, so for him, I would also be happy if every if Calgary stay in the league. It comes to a corner kick, and in the 98th minute, Altare scores an equalizer. An absolutely mad game. I mean, it was not a great game, but it was a mad game, because so many things have, have, have happened, so many twists and turns along the way. And yeah, Salentano not, not safe, Calgary having a shot. So, uh, really, really, really exciting stuff. 
But for me, nothing beats the excitement of uh, the title race. And Fatal Verona, or Verona Fatal, Verona twice late in the season, a million were in first place, over the 73 in 1990, had um, uh, tripped up Milan so that they did not win the, uh, the championship. And this was basically the big story around this game. Uh, I can personally tell you, while uh, those st stories always scare me a little bit, uh, I don't deny that, I always find them stupid because this is a long time ago. And yes, this is probably two instances. I actually would like to, and I probably should, look at all the Verona-Milan games uh, that have happened and how often it happened late in the season. I mean, Milan, I, you know, maybe these were the two times that they, they were in first place and they played late, but it just seems so idiotic in many ways. But I identified this game, you know, Milan can afford one draw. And I identified this game as the one where I said, okay, here the draw, and I think we're still fine because Verona is a very unpleasant opponent because if they win the ball, they go straight to the goal. Very, 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 very quickly, uh, which is uh, super exciting to see. Uh, but it scared me a little bit. On the other side, I said, uh, exactly this, if you can't can control it, I think uh, Milan does better against better opponents. And Milan played the Verona style. They completely stifled for the first half hour. Uh, Verona really, really well and created chances. Even a, great, uh, a greatly played goal where Menya uh, uh, pins the ball in, 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 into the box where Tonale stays strong and puts it into the net. Fortunately, he was offside with his leg. I, I hate those types of offside. I understand why it's given. Okay, we got to live with it. But uh, it was really, really uh, tough, uh, uh, tough, tough blow for a second. I, I, I didn't even realize. I mean, um, I got distracted and I said, yeah, me, 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 so yeah, uh, but the problem was that after the 30 minutes or so that Verona got better into, into the game, they all had already the one chance through Steve uh, Simeone. I said, nil nil at halftime, I'll take that. Because in the second half, a regroup. Unfortunately, Lazovic plays in a wonderful cross and the Milan uh, defense is completely called out uh, and Faraoni uh, can head it home from point blank range. Yeah, not happy about that one. However, Milan then shook themselves off, took about five minutes, but then uh, got Leao going again and uh, in an absolutely great move. I mean, first off, Salamakers wins the ball and Salamakers have been getting a lot of shtick. But I think this game, yes, he had a shot, he had a shot where I, I think he he shouldn't have the ball go uh, above. He needs to get the shot on, on goal. But uh, he had a lot of hard playing and he won that ball uh, that was then played onto um, Leao, who just looks at the Verona defense, goes past, and then Tonali, like a striker, and I would expect it from Giroud, to, to, uh, to, to be honest, goes right in the center, positions himself where the Leao can play the ball to him and 1-1, one, one, just before the halftime. Yay! Birthday boy, Tonali, one has to say. And then the same thing happens again. Salimaker win the ball, the uh, uh, ball is played into Leao, who runs across, uh, again, flying past the defenders, nice cross in, Tonali puts it in the United 15th minute, 2-1. And then Milan went out for the kill. Unfortunately, they didn't really get it, but they went in, uh, even a little bit more offensive. First of all, Salah makes off, Messias on. Uh, Messias, who very late, late, late on missed the sitter. Then uh, Rebic came on for Giroud, who, yeah, you can see that Giroud is tired. I, th I think as he's not playing well, um, but they really went in to kill this game. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't uh, really con con convert. There were a few, especially when Lasagna came on for, uh, in the 72nd minute. I really thought, yeah, Verona, this could still end in it. Lasagna was a little bit of thorn in, in, in inside. However, when Ibrahimovic and Florenzi came on, the game was calm enough, and within two minutes, Messias plays a ball into Florenzi, who just... Uh, shoots it or rockets it in the internet 3-1 game done and does it three goals when has Milan scored three three goals the last time another comeback back winner then Messias should, should, should have made it four you could see that this Milan team is super high spirits and it's such an joy, a joyful sight to see uh, this makes me feel really confident 
a little bit less confident. I'm, I'm, I'm about for the upcoming games because they're both nasty, nasty opponents, especially Atalanta home. Okay, but you can take one draw. And I think this is India. I very well think that it at this moment, we'll look at the table in a second, four points is totally within Milan's reach. And I, it, it, it would be amazing if they can do so. Um, yesterday evening, I didn't see it, but Fiorentina with uh, two first first goal beats, uh, Roma 2-0, put themselves again into contention for the European spots. Uh, Roma, of course, they are, in a con they, have, they are playing a conference league final. They might, if they win this one, they go into the Europa League as, 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 as well. So yeah, it would be nice for Roma to uh, secure it via the league, to be honest. Uh, but yeah. With that, looks a little bit a uh, tougher road ahead. So let's look uh, at the current standings. Um, let's start at, at the top. Toss up between Inter and Milan. Inter have to play Cagliari away from home. Uh, Cagliari that have to go all out and get something from that game. Uh, as you can see, they're uh, on the bottom, they're only one point behind Salernitana. We'll see who will who, who, who playing. They probably will even need to win this. So uh, this is a do or die game for Cagliari. And a Milan play at home to Atalanta, who, as you see, so for the European spots, we have a three-way tie. And the, thanks to the three-way tie, Roma is still in sixth, ahead of Fiorentina and Atalanta. And Atalanta, as I said, have to uh, play. So it's also not an easy game for Milan right there. So yeah, interesting stuff for sure. Um, then... Let's go all the way to the bottom. It is an absolute dogfight. No team is relegated yet. It doesn't look good for Venezia, though. Uh, they can get re 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 relegated next season. But between Salatana, Cagliari and Genoa, yes, Salatana have the best um, position. But the other two clearly have a chance. They're within two points. I don't think Spezia will get dragged in, although there's a teeny tiny chance that they might. So let's look at this last round. Uh, we have um, Empoli Salernitana. Empoli have nothing to play for. I, I don't think it's an easy game for Salazar, but you could see uh, them winning. Then uh, let's go further. Roma have to play Venezia. That probably will do it for Venezia, unless Roma uh, really... But as you saw, Roma probably need the points. You shouldn't put all the eggs in the final basket because that can go wrong. We have Napoli against Genoa. Not easy, but again, Napoli have not really much to play for. Milan-Atalanta is a game with huge stakes and it's ahead of Cagliari Inter. Milan need the win, Atalanta probably also if they want to play in Europe next season. So not easy for sure. Um, and then um, Cagliari have to play Inter. Yeah. So there, 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 there you go. Uh, Monday we have two uh, interesting traditional matchups but nothing that really plays much into the table. But before that, most importantly, we have the Italian Cup final, Juve against Inter. Uh, I hope for a really tight, really, really tough game, for obvious reasons. But yeah, that should be an exciting final. Uh, two of the most star story sides of Derby in Italia. There's no love lost between the auto, those two. So uh, really looking forward to that one as well. So that's it from me for Serie A uh, this, um, this week. I don't think I will do one for the cup final, but I, I, I may come back. I will do other videos uh, then and we'll talk about the cup final in uh, next week's video. It's exciting. It's absolutely exciting. Please let me know who you think will win Sierra, who will get relegated, and how will this three-way tie resolve. That would be very interesting to see. In any case, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!